This video is brought to you by ASRock and the new B550 Phantom Gaming Riptide. It is a more budget friendly board, but it has some pretty high end features. It's a pretty good mix. So you've got a primary X16 slot that runs a PCI Express 4.0 and then two physical X16 slots that are through the chipset. So those are PCI Express 3.0, but that gives you a good mix, a good ability to run high end expansion cards, things like that. We've got a 10 power phase design. <laughs> Dr. Moss, <laughs> driver plus uh, MOSFET, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. This is more than capable enough to drive the 5950X, but it'll also work well with those new APUs like the 4000 and 5000 series uh, processors that have the built-in Vega. So at the back, you've got a ton of USB connectivity. Look at all that USB connectivity. One USB Type-C and two USB ports that are optimized for the new like over 1000 Hertz USB polling devices. This is of course the B550 chipset and it supports memory up to DDR4-4933. It's got the uh, killer E3100 NIC, that's a 2.5 gig NIC, 7.1 channel audio based around the Realtek ALC897 audio codec. Also in the box is the GPU support. So yeah, the, these motherboards have the components arranged so you can use an included metal bracket as a support for the far end of your graphics card which is pretty awesome. So it's a pretty good balance of, of uh, features and value. So if you're looking at doing AMD for your next build, you should give this board a look. Thanks ASRock and on with the video. On today's episode of Mystery Piece Theater, there's a pile of electronics in front of me and we really need to take a look at this because this is something everybody's home lab needs. This is great. All right, so spoiler alert, this is the third or fourth time that I have completely disassembled and reassembled this thing. This is my new toy. This is the Pi KVM from PiKVM.org. Go to their website and read along while I tell you about it. So this is the full enchilada. This is like the maximum accessory kit. It comes with the Pi KVM hat and a ribbon cable for the Raspberry Pi 4. Although there's also a ribbon cable for the Raspberry Pi Zero. If you wanna to try to do this with a Raspberry Pi Zero, you can. Recommend the Raspberry Pi 4 personally. It does not come with the Raspberry Pi 4 or the storage card, the SD card, but that's all you really need with this setup. Actually, you could boot it off the, uh, the network because the Raspberry Pi 4 supports that. We're not gonna do that. This is remote control for a computer and remote power on in a hat. So you can add out of band management to any computer. So if you're doing like the home lab, home server thing, because you get that cool, you know, Ryzen 1700, which you can now get on eBay for practically nothing, and you want an eight core home server, but you're running it off of a cheap motherboard, and you would like to be able to remote into the computer and change the BIOS settings remotely, this is the thing that will do that for you. But before we get to that, there's some accessories. The other thing that you also get is like, wait a minute, you can turn it on and off remotely. How do you do that? You'd have to plug into the, the front panel of the thing. Well, that's what this is for. This is RJ45. It looks like this is, a network connection, but this is actually just an eight wire thing that goes to this thing. So right here, everything on this side of the device is basically for interfacing to your computer. So HDMI, USB-C, those are for your keyboard and mouse emulation. And then your, uh, you know, RJ45 connection, which is not network. It's for this, which would live inside your computer. This is a breakout board for your front panel connections. So basically you plug your front panel connections into this and you plug this into your motherboard. So your reset button and your power switch and all that inside your computer still works as normal. It's just that this little breakout board lets you also pass control of power and reset to this little thing, which you can control, you know, remotely because it's a whole other computer. It's the whole computer within a computer out of band management. This is what that A speed 2500 is that I keep going on about in servers, except now you can DIY it and it's not an A speed 2500, it's actually, better and more elaborately complex than an ASP2500, which is mind boggling, but I digress. Also in the box, you get a really cool, you know, this is a powder coated serious metal enclosure. I'm glad they went this way instead of a uh, 3D printed type thing. It is definitely a uh, nice accessory. It's definitely high end. Also comes with a little fan. I've sort of pre-installed the fan to save us some time on assembly, but when you put it together, you know, that's basically what you get for the assembly, it's really awesome. They also include all the screws and everything that you need to get everything going. They include this little cable with uh, some connections here. I think this is the in-circuit programmer that is associated with this. This is an optional dual USB-C connection with a USB type A connector. So this will actually bolt on here and give you two more USB type C connections that could potentially connect to the computer that you want to control. 
The reason this exists is for devices that are problematic with USB emulation. So this connection here is a USB on the go connection to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi, the Broadcom controller basically, has USB on the go built in. So you don't really need to do anything special for that. You can use the USB on the go interface on the Raspberry Pi to emulate peripherals. Serial devices, keyboard, mice. Works great on almost everything, but some people might be using this with really old or crappy servers or machines that have a really buggy BIOS. So this is a true HID human interface device interface board based around the Atmel AVR. So there's a second programmable microcontroller on this that provides a USB-C interface for keyboards and mice. Some really crappy KVMs, not the level one KVM, want explicit keyboard and mouse ports. This will give you explicit keyboard and mouse ports for those really crappy KVMs. So you can chain this to a non-IP KVM and effectively have an IP KVM. You don't need this with the level one KVMs. It works fine with the USB on the go interface, which is awesome. This interface also gives you a USB type A on the side. So with the USB type A, the idea here is that you can plug in like a 256 gig flash drive. And if that flash drive has ISOs, operating system installation images, other stuff that you might need for imaging, you can just use that with the Raspberry Pi KVM. And it can actually emulate a CD-ROM for your host device. So if you've got a Windows ISO, this thing will pretend to be the CD-ROM to the host computer and you can boot off of it and install Windows completely remotely. It's pretty cool stuff. I would say that most people do not need this. I mean, go ahead and get this if you want to support the project and, and be assured for maximum compatibility. You can actually do some of the, uh, the device emulation stuff without this, but to be sure, it does work dramatically way better if you do have this. So, use it if you can. If you need to get really extra special creative, there is even a PS2 breakout header. So you could support PS2 devices natively and not through emulation with this header as well. So I feel like the, uh, the implementers here have got you covered no matter what sort of insane device you might need in terms of, uh, you know, interface and all that kind of thing. And this also has the, the micro header for that, you know, USB breakout in case you need to run back here and connect to you know, another USB port or whatever to reprogram this. It's totally an option. Most people won't need this. This is really cool. This is the Pi KVM OLED screen. So it's just a four pin connection, serial peripheral connection. You just plug it in here. It's got its little carrier 3D printed thing. It lives inside the case. And this little status screen will show you the IP address and some other things, which is really cool. Don't freak out if when you plug this in, it doesn't work immediately. When you flash the image onto the SD card, we'll get to that. There's some configuration steps you need to take to enable this and this and the fan, uh, depending on you know what set of accessories you have. So it doesn't auto detect them. You have to go in and do a little bit of configuration, but it's fine, it's totally fine. Also in the box is this you know rainbow colored cable. This is all of the cabling that you could possibly need for connecting your front panel connections to this and then managing the front panel connections from this to your actual front panel wires. So that's cool. It comes with half height as well as full height brackets, which will cover whatever your expansion slot needs are. Typically you see these half height slots in servers. So if you have a server that doesn't have full height expansion slots, sometimes small form factor desktops, but most people will be using the full height bracket, which is really, really awesome. And we have a USB-C bridge. So this will bridge power to your Raspberry Pi. So this is this will take power from the breakout board and send it to the Raspberry Pi, which is awesome. And then we have some 3D printed accessories and screws. So these are the standoffs that go in the bottom. Well, let, let me just show you how to assemble this. It's really easy. So first I would suggest that you start with the standoffs. Well, put your Raspberry Pi together like this and then connect this ribbon cable. You have to pop the latch up and then slide the ribbon cable in and then push the latch down on both sides. It might actually be easier to put the cable in the Raspberry Pi first and then feed it through the slot in the printed circuit board and then put it in here because you have these little, like don't yank on this flat ribbon cable. You have to latch and unlatch it. If you yank on it, you're gonna damage the contacts. So don't do that. So just sort of grab the sides of the, the connector there and the, the cable just pops right in and right out. If you've got it in all the way, you should not be able to see any metal pins. So look for that. It should just be white plastic that you see. And it comes wrapped in foil, which reduces on uh, electromagnetic interference. Otherwise you'll get lines and weird stuff like that 
in your, uh, in your HDMI display. So once you've got this assembled, you just need to put these little standoffs on the bottom here somewhere. Now if you've got one other extra standoff, that's this one, and that is meant to go on top of your, you know, this thing. So... All that, make sure the USB-C ports line up. And then this is gonna go right like that. Now the Pi KVM hat, you can see it has a little tiny battery soldered on it. That's for the built-in real-time clock because the Raspberry Pi doesn't have a built-in real-time clock, but now it does. Don't forget to connect your USB-C power accessory on the side so that your Pi KVM can get power. And the fan is gonna sit right here. So the power for the fan is located on this header and it is labeled plus and minus, red is plus. So you'll want to connect that header, make sure that's in good, make sure that your fan cable's nice and out of the way, and that's pretty much it aside from I need to put in some more screws and make it a little bit better. But this gives you your front panel connections, a serial console, you've got your, your USB on the go interface, but then you also have your USB mouse and keyboard and USB type A interface if you really need it for uh, accessories. The HDMI, the micro HDMI is still accessible so you can plug that in and get a console in your Raspberry Pi if you need to troubleshoot it. Of course the Type 3 and Type 2, uh, or the USB 3 and the USB 2 interfaces are still available. The regular Ethernet interface is unchanged, you know, serial console, and then you've got your USB-C power and link uh, if you need to do other stuff and you've got a red and green light here. You know, minimally you've got the red and green light, but you also have the optional OLED screen. So if you get all the accessories and accoutrement, the website says it's going to be about $130, give or take, plus shipping and handling and some other fees, I'm sure. But $150 for this, you know, an A10 IP KVM is like $500 plus. So this is a pretty good deal for what it is. And the fact that you can remotely turn on a machine. So let's take a look at the software. Now the software for this is open source and technically you don't even need to buy any of these hats. So the reason this thing is sort of catching on is because the USB console interfaces have gotten super, super cheap. And so you can plug this thing in, you can basically plug a USB capture card into your Raspberry Pi and get a remote interface. And then somebody said, well, wait, the Raspberry Pi can emulate a keyboard. And this thing just sort of snowballed from there. Well, the software developer behind this, you know, brilliant guy, put a lot of work into this, it seems. And the software is really what makes this. The software is more polished than uh, an IP KVM that you would have from like HP or Dell or Supermicro or Gigabyte or anybody, you know, e even the A-Speed 2500. The web interface supports motion JPEG as well as H.265 streaming, but you can also customize the interface. Out of the box, you gotta do some initial setup and configuration. SSH into the machine first and set the root password. The root password is different than the web interface password. When you first log in, you're greeted with these helpful messages. So even if you're a total noob, you're not gonna have any problems. Set the password. Now that's setting the password for the operating system. The Raspberry Pi is a Linux machine. It's very powerful. People could totally be binding, you know, Monero or Bitcoin or anything on that and you don't want that. So you wanna set a secure root password. When you log in, it also tells you that you can run a command to set the admin password for the web interface. Go ahead and do that. Those passwords should not be the same, they should be different. The next thing is because we've got these accessories, we want to run a couple of commands to enable the OLED screen. It's a system D service. System D. Who knew? You just run this and enable the service and your OLED screen will come right up. You don't even have to restart. Same with the fan control. Without the service, the fan runs at 100%. But with the, the service, the fan is going to run, you know, depending on what the Pi KVM actually needs. And it's a lot less audible when you're, you know, in control because when it's running at 100%, you can definitely hear it. If you need to do further customizations, well, there's YAML files and there's good documentation. There's actually some example recipes in the cookbook for this on their GitHub where you can daisy chain some commands or serial control because you've got those console ports for like a serial KVM to be able to, to do whatever. Because the level one tax KVM supports USB 1.1, you know, HID emulation. You can just send keystrokes, you know, through this to a level one KVM and switch inputs from one to four. And that works reasonably well, provided you've got the, the extra Atmel HID accessory in the top. I love the fact that this is open source and you see on their website, there's references to like the V2 or, you know, other versions. You don't have to buy the hat to use this. You could, you know, DIY it, but it's just so convenient and so relatively inexpensive that 
for me, it's worth paying a hundred bucks for the convenience of, of just, you know, plug this in, flash an image, do some configuration. The SD card slot is still accessible. And then I have this, this magical little black box that's gonna give me remote access even to the BIOS. Now, the system that we're testing here, that is a uh, EVGA 3175X. You know, it's a really high-end 28-core Intel Xeon. It's, it's a banana system, but it doesn't provide any out-of-band or remote management. But now it does. I can turn it on remotely, I can reset it remotely, I can long hold on the power remotely in case it's hung or has some other problem, and everything works really well. Now this machine has native HDMI, that's no problem. I know what you're thinking, a lot of servers and other stuff that maybe don't have out of band, those still have VGA. Well I've got good news for you, I've got a USB powered VGA to HDMI adapter. This thing supports up to 1920 by 1080p input, of course it defaults to 720p, but I've got my VGA to HDMI adapter, and yes, I can use VGA input with this thing. It's USB powered. I can power it right off the USB 2 input on the uh, on the KVM, and it works great. I decided to take out the uh, the WhatsApp Pro to see how many watts this thing uses when I've got a remote session going under normal usage scenarios. So I got this USB battery bank from Kioxia. <laughs> I, I got that plugged in, four and a half watts. This thing will run for like an hour in the no power scenario. So that if something's down, I can remote in and be like, oh, the server doesn't even have power. The, you know, the, the Pi KVM is still going strong. What is it? What is it? They say in the security thing, in the, in the security, uh, security world, red teaming. If you're, if you're red teaming, <laughs> one of these and a battery pack could be a fun, nifty device, huh? Huh? Yeah, just throw it up in a ceiling somewhere and you're good to go. Of course, that was probably true with the regular Raspberry Pi without the KVM component of it either, but... I digress. So bottom line, everything that I thought that I would suggest to improve on this device has already been incorporated into devices feedback. If you actually crawl the GitHub and the forum and some of the other stuff, a lot of it has been documented. All of the common complaints that all of like the, the upper echelon system administrators might have, somebody has already thought of. And because it's open source, they're building it into this. This is already better than a commercial solution in a lot of ways. Of course, with great flexibility comes great responsibility. You're gonna have to make sure that this is secure and locked down and that bad guys aren't living inside your, your KVM if you're gonna deploy these on a 24 seven, you know, kind of a scenario. But if you're, you know, having to do something on site and you just need a quick plug and play thing, this could be in your tool bag. You can whip this out and plug it into whatever device is being problematic and it could be your remote, you know, uh, hands. If you're in a scenario where you've got a lot of remote offices and you're just one guy having to support a bunch of offices and you got to walk people through stuff over the phone, uh, deploy this to all of your remote offices and just have them plug the computer into that. It's going to make everybody's life easier and it'll be way easier for you to deal with it because you can literally unplug it, plug it in, deal with it. You can just equip every computer with one of these breakout cables and be able to turn it on or off remotely or just, you know, telephone the guy that's there and be like, all right, reset it now. All right, press and hold power. All right, good. I'm good to go. This is basically the final production version. There have been a couple of other versions that have uh, floated around YouTube. This is such a good product. I'm ordering two more immediately and I'll probably order a lot more than that over the next year just to you know the friends and family discounts like yeah okay grandma yep yep just get the black box out and just shove it into your computer or maybe I'll just leave it plugged in all the time and be good to go there the only thing this doesn't have is pass-through so when you plug in with HDMI you know there's 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 nothing else for that but you can combine that with a level 1 text KVM and have DisplayPort pass through to HDMI and that all works really well of course this device is limited to 1080p so you gotta know what the limitations are. But it does work really well. On Whittle, this is level one. This is an amazing device. Even if you don't plan to buy one of these, you should check out their website and just be aware that it exists because it is so cool. All right, I'm signing out and you can find me in the level one forums. Come with questions or pictures of your setup. PyKVM.org, link below, check it out.